What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So I'm talking about Scream 6 in this video here today. This will be the final video that you will hear from me before I see the movie tomorrow night. And I am going to put up my spoiler free review tomorrow night. You will have the chance to look at it at 3 a.m. Eastern depending on where you are. For some of you it'll be 12 a.m. if you live in California or just in that different time zone. Uh, so just jump into what you see in the title and in the thumbnail. We're going to be talking about Kirby Reed and we're also going to be talking about Sidney Prescott and Nev Campbell's hopeful return that radio silence has related to a future project aka of course scream 7 but just to start off with kirby reed a new clip between kirby and detective bailey has been released courtesy of good morning america where hayden was a guest earlier this morning so in this clip we learned a lot of things about kirby reed and some things to speculate on regarding the plot so one we know that kirby lives in atlanta apparently and that's where she's based primarily when it pertains to new york or pertains to the fbi i meant to say and two victims in this movie were residents of Atlanta before they moved to New York for college. She had been investigating their online activity because she takes interest in ghost face attacks. Now, the thing about that that stuck out to not only me, but I know a lot of you, is like, what exactly is she talking about when it comes to the online activity of people that are presumably dead? Because what were these two doing online that they needed to be tracked down? You guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below because I'm not really going to get into my own thoughts about it too much since I again am less than a day away from seeing the movie. But I would say it sounds like we might have Ghostface taking out a pair of criminals in the opening. We could see we could be we could be seeing something very twisted and something very unlike anything we've seen before because this opening has been kind of praised in a lot of ways. It's been compared to the best opening since the original yada 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 this that and the third. I had I had hopes that this would be somehow able to top the second movie. And it seems like it has with people saying it's the best opening since the second one. I think that is what she's talking about. She has to be referring to whatever happened in the opening in terms of whoever these two victims are. Now, just to talk about something else here. Hayden, to me, was doing a great job when it came to capturing the mannerisms of Kirby in a more mature way. She kind of just it's it's almost as if it came natural to her the way she was re reviving the character of Kirby Reed. She had those Kirby mannerisms and it just came off like a much more mature and hardened version of the character we first met back in 2011. Uh, and she did a great job. It's very easy to tell that she is portraying a character because she's she's not acting like the person I tend to see in a lot of her interviews in a lot of these other movies I've seen her in. She's a very good, talented actress, and she's doing it once more in this upcoming movie going off of this clip. Now, the other important thing that we learned about Kirby is that her and Sam know each other. Apparently, they already know each other. Obviously, the logical thing is that these two must have ran into each other at Woodsboro High when Sam was first starting as a freshman and when Kirby was a senior. That's pretty much all that has to be. That's all they literally have to do. I thought it was a nice touch, though, to hear a bit of dialogue like that to try to link screen four to five and now, of course, linking it to six. However, now we need to talk about this other exciting thing that fans were going going on about last night on Twitter. I don't think a lot of people were really touching on it, but you know, the ones, those of you who sent it to me, you know who you are. This was a clip from Cinem Cinema Pop. I'll leave a link to the tweet actually so you can see the video in the description. But it was Radio Silent saying that they've been talking to Nev all throughout the process of her exiting, exiting Scream 6. So it seems like they've been trying to soften the blow of what happened and just remind her that they, they all support what she did. They are, they understand why she did what she did. But can you please come back? Because we know that they are fans of hers. It seems like they are hopeful she'll return for Scream 7. That's the energy that, that's literally what they said. Well, Matt said it, to be more specific, during this interview. This alone should be enough for folks to kind of just shut the hell up about the takes about radio silence, not caring about Sidney Prescott. They don't care about Nev Campbell. Oh, you know, why didn't they pay her? I mean, it's pretty simple why they didn't pay her. It's not up to them. It's not how that works. They have a job to do and securing Nev Campbell, that is not part of their job. No matter how much they want her to be part of the projects that they are making that relate to a character she can bring back, they are not responsible for paying Nev Campbell what she wants to be paid. That's not that's not how that works. I'm just hopeful that if Sidney Prescott does return, it's not in a similar fashion of what we saw in Screen 5. Because the 
context of five uses the character in the best way possible and it's a great send-off for her and i think it just brings it full circle in in a more effective way than you would have had if she is just showing up throwing herself into the mix because Ghostface is back and there's no real personal edge to it at all when it had nothing to do with her for the most part they found a way to use Sidney Prescott in the best way possible given the context of how they decided to write their story but doing it again no this is Sidney Prescott stuff like that being done with Sidney that's fine for like a one and done if you're going to use her make her the focus or the co-focus or just admit that her story is over I've long said that what we should do in Scream 7 is have a, I've said this many times before in the past, I've seen it online, many people think this, we need a story that relates to killing all the survivors because what that can do is give you an easy way to explain Sydney's absence once more if Nev decides to not come back. And what do I mean by that? You can literally have the killer say something about, like one of the survivors could ask, well, what about Sydney? And the killer could be Ghostface, of course, can say, I'm all about saving the best for last. Or go like, as for Sydney, I'm all about saving the best for last. Like an easy bit of dialogue like that, which shows the utmost respect for the character of Sydney while acknowledging the fact that she unfortunately is not here. It at least is giving you also a reasonable reason why she isn't here because even this killer has some type of respect for her, some type of twisted respect for her that he wants to save her for last. <laughs> uh, that would be a clever way to explain her absence if it came down to it. I do think that Nev Campbell most likely something tells me she won't be back I, i'm sorry something tells me she won't be back i do not have a problem if she does come back i don't have a problem if she doesn't come back i'm ready for whatever iteration of scream 7 we get i would say if it were up to me if it all came down to everything being in my control i wouldn't have a final scream movie without sydney prescott i'm just not somebody that wants to live with their head in the clouds and act as though if she's not in it it's the worst thing possible and that my whole life is going to fall and collapse around me because that's not what's going to happen that's very dramatic it's a little bit over overreacting in terms of the overall situation if Sydney is in the last Scream movie, that is that is a good thing to have. If she's not, it can also be a good thing to have. Again, if it was completely up to me in a perfect world, she'd be back. Something just tells me she won't be. But I'm hopeful that they can work something out. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you would like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.